All right, hello there. I'm adding this to the start of the video as fair warning. This one gets really ranty. I didn't intend it to be this way. I just wanted to list off some problems, but uh, covering them all made me mad because this game, oh my God, this game. <laughs> Other than that, there's quite a long intro because I felt like it needed it. So just be aware of it. If you don't want so-called negative content or whatever, then uh, this isn't the video for you, but it's an important one. Okay, uh, enjoy. Ladies and gents, welcome to the video. I'm Get Good Guy. This is Battlefield 5, and I've got what I think is an important topic today, put forward in a way that we haven't really discussed before. Today we're focusing on what DICE must learn from Battlefield 5's failure. And I say that because, and I know some people will have come to this conclusion a long time ago, some won't come to it yet, some may disagree even, but I think that logically, perhaps objectively, we're past the point now of saying that Battlefield 5 will likely not be another incredible DICE turnaround. A la the comeback of Battlefield 4, for example, the way that people discuss that, how it released and how it ended it up because the lack of the increase in quality, the constant delays, the constant problems, and there just being no signs that this game is actually going to get to the right point. It's been a long time now, and when you consider the timeline of making games, they will already be working on the next Battlefield at this point, perhaps even with most of the studio working on that game now to avoid our Battlefield 5's being, I just can't see this ending up the way some people want it to. Because whether you like the game or not, think it's good or not, I don't think there's any way to argue that this game is been a success. When you look at the coverage of the game, the removal of servers and modes, the constant issues, the lack of interesting content on the game, the lack of content in the game, it's been a failure. And so if DICE learn from this, it will go down as a black mark in the Battlefield franchise that taught them lessons and led to better things. If they don't, this could go down as the start of the decline of the Battlefield series and perhaps the end of the Battlefield series. And so with that laid out, I'm going to go through the points that I've got that DICE must learn from for the next Battlefield and onwards because we do not want another Battlefield 5 debacle. I'll go through each of them relatively quickly because I've got a lot to cover as I'm sure you can imagine and let me know in the comments below what you think, what the worst problems were and then you think I miss out. All right, so playability over aesthetics. Uh, I get that DICE, some of the devs seem to want it to be cinematic and all that kind of stuff and have atmosphere, but playability matters more. In Battlefield 5, not being able to see the enemy a lot of the time, although it's been improved, has been co a complete nightmare really, especially with the prone MMGs to begin with. Now, whether you like those guns or not, in fact, especially if you like them, you should probably hold visibility accountable even more so than those that didn't like them because it brought a lot more hate for MMGs than they would have got already. Not being able to see people, not just lying in, you know, in cover, but out in the open is and was a massive problem. It's way better than before, but still it's too much, especially without proper, you know, manual spotting and such like. Not that I'm saying that has to come back, opinion will differ on that, but I'm sure you see my point. Playability matters more than aesthetics, and I'm going to include in that things like the crazy contrast that's in the game, really dark areas, and then really bright sunlight. An issue that was in Battlefield 1 as well, actually. Or the bluish tint that's on some maps, like on Devastation. That map without the bluish tint would be pretty cool, but with the blue tint on it, I don't think it looks as good, and it's hard to see people. Plus loads of clutter. So yeah, playability matters more than aesthetics. I want the game to look good, but I want it to be playable as well. Uh, weapon design choices next, and that leads on nicely actually because we've had things like the MMGs and the anti-material rifles. Now again, whether you enjoy those guns or not, from a game design standpoint, having guns that basically require you to be prone and stationary, uh, it's just not a great idea. It causes so many problems, and if you want to disagree, that's fine, but I think there are so many objective reasons why it's bad for the game, and also it's always going to be incredibly hard to balance those things, because how do you make them not overpowered and or annoying and still useful. Next up, what about having a clear, consistent and well-communicated vision for the game? The debate still rages on about whether DICE said this game was going to be realistic to begin with or not, whether that was changed, whether they were actually going for the unheard stories or made up stories, does the game want to be realistic or not, is this an arcade shooter or a simulation? You can't be everything to everyone and Battlefield 5 has found that out to its detriment. It's tried to have kind of hardcore aspects in it, but then also appeal to a casual market it by changing the TTK and all this kind of stuff. Decide what you want and run with it and support it and make it good. Flip-flopping multiple times throughout the game's life cycle isn't good, it's not going to work and it's hurt the game massively. Next up, management must change or be replaced. The management are to blame for a huge amount of the problems with this game, I guarantee you. I've talked about some of that before and I know some stuff that I've not talked about as well. The management are horrendous a lot of the time. They're either too self-absorbed, clueless, or they don't care 
care about what you want. And you can look at the Glassdoor.com reviews as well to see what former employees have felt about the management at DICE. It's been pretty horrendous. Next up, quality and deadlines matter. Now, while it's all kind of supposed to be funny that they've embraced this coming soon thing, putting it on skins, using it in their community posts, making it into a meme, it shouldn't be a thing. It just shouldn't be a thing that has been so many delays and problems that coming soon is now recognized as being attached to the Battlefield 5 product. You've got to try to hit your deadlines and release quality content. You can't have bugs in everything. You can't have everything be delayed. You can't have all sorts of stuff cancelled or promise to be this month and then come six months later or show stuff in reveal footage and then not get it for a year. Yes, I'm still mad about this stuff because it's ridiculous and insulting. I'm not expecting you to hit every single deadline because there are problems sometimes. I'm not saying release stuff in a poor state, but if you can't do the job, then why should we pay the money? Next up, PR matters, public relations. Oh, please, next time, don't have stuff out there that just annoys the community en masse. Don't insult people, call them uneducated, tell them just don't buy the game. Have parties where you take the piss out of the communities. It's just laughable. PR matters, we all know this. I'm not saying pander to the vocal minority, but the way that you've handled PR in this game has been an absolute abomination. Next up, an engine upgrade or fresh start is needed. If we get a third game in a row where I randomly get kicked off ladders or can't mantle things properly and all kinds of problems like that, I'm going to be kind of furious, to be honest. It's not acceptable. And although the movement and stuff has improved from Battlefield 1 to Battlefield 5, I feel, there's still problems that just shouldn't exist. And having issues like the tech not being in place, I, I, I mean, this, this one drives me crazy, to be honest, as we found recently. Not being able to put modes into the game again because the UI can't handle it or something. Embarrassing. This is, that's not a AAA product. And all the excuses we've had before about modes being removed or why we can't have them now look ridiculous. Now we know we just can't have them in the game because of tech problems. And I'm going to come back to that later on about being told one thing and then finding out something else. Next up, RSP matters. The public games are, are atrocious. You get barely any options. They don't work properly. The servers crash. You got to kick people out and restart them. Sometimes I'll be trying to use my private server for thumbnails and it tell me one's already running, but it's not because I've closed it and I try and run the new one and it still tells me it's running and I have to turn the game off, put it back on and see if it works now. Embarrassing. I keep using that word. It's embarrassing. Next up, don't ignore details. The lack of polish, features not working, menu descriptions being wrong, and we're supposed to act like that's fine when all it takes is to rewrite that section of the menu. Like, do I really need to say that? A full price AAA game with these problems this long after release. Uh, next up, don't make vast changes multiple times. I mean, again, I shouldn't have to say this, but changing the TTK multiple times in the game over the course of what, a year and a half? After doing it without being asked and then saying you wouldn't do it again, and doing it before Christmas twice when there's going to be, as I'm sure you wanted, new players coming into the game. No, it's, it's stupid, disrespectful, counterintuitive and poor business practice. And go, go and grab someone like me, not me, if you don't want me, go and grab someone like me that's going to tell you that these things shouldn't happen and actually listen to them. Someone from the community that will speak for at least a decent chunk of the community. You need someone doing this because right now it seems like no one is telling the shot callers no and you've destroyed this game. And actually, helpfully, looking at the next bullet point, it's, it leads on. Listen to and respect your community. I don't really need to add anything to that. Your core community, yeah, gotta listen to them and do what at least a good chunk of them want. That's like game development 101. Give the people what they want. Next up, if mistakes have been made, don't double down and insult the community. And I do mean insult. So you screwed this game up and you got low interest in it. We get it. But taking away servers, taking away the UK servers, taking away the South African servers and stuff like, taking away game modes, do you think that's going to help? You're going to save a little money. If it's EA or DICE, I don't know. But given those excuses like, oh, well, most South African players seem to like to play on European servers. No, get out of it. Stupid. Ridiculous. You screwed your game up and now you're taking away the way for people to play it. And you think they're going to want to come back in the next one? Shameful. Next up, vehicle balance matters. People don't want to be sniped from vast ranges by a tank they can't hit. And I imagine vehicle users don't want to be forced to do that because their tanks feel clunky and slow and not very good if they try and push in. Get the balance right between infantry and vehicles, put time into it, and get rid of things like having rockets do more damage from certain angles or bounce off if you don't hit it properly. People aren't going to stand there and weigh up what angle they're going to try to hit. If they hit the tank, make it do damage. If they don't hit the tank, make it not do damage. Give the tank the appropriate amount of armor, and if you want different sides to do different damage, like the back or the front or whatever, that's fine because it's easy for people to process in real time. Next up, regular content is needed. The live service for this game is
is bad. It's terrible. It doesn't match up to other live services I've seen, and this is exacerbated by all the delays and cancellations, and roadmaps with stuff on it that didn't appear. Next up, attrition caused more problems than lends benefits. Things like playing solo way too hard now. Things like playing as a medic being way too powerful because you can heal all the time and other classes can't. Attrition was a cool premise that hasn't really worked out in my opinion, and it would be better for the next one not to have it, or at least only have certain elements of it, although I know some people will disagree. Next up, don't lie to us. That's it. Don't lie to the community. Do you know how many lies I've pointed out in my content over the past year and a half? How many things don't line up from one post to the next? How many community posts just have blatant misleading aspects or vagaries in it? Just tell us the truth. Be honest. We'll appreciate it way more, I promise you. And finally, your core community deserves focus. Yes, casual player base is massively important as they flip from one game to the next as they come out and flesh out the game. But your core community is your long-term lifeblood. They deserve respect. Give them what they need. Support them and don't act as if they don't matter while you try and pull in new players. And that's what I've got to say. I'm going to cut it there because there's so many points uh, and it's maddening. And this has turned into a genuine rant and I didn't intend it to be that. But honestly, reading off all of that in one go, it shows me how colossal this failure has been and how insulting the development has been. And I know people at DICE right now will be sitting there and going, yes, we know, we wish it wasn't like this and we blame management or blame this guy or that guy or whoever it may be. Please let me know what you think. Uh, please let me know what you want to be different and, and lessons must be learned from this. And I hope Battlefield 6 is excellent. Uh, leaving a like is massive. I really appreciate it. Uh, all the links to my social media, including Patreon, can be found in the description below as well. Oh, and subscribe if you're new. Uh, I've got loads of content coming out. Uh, here's the board of awesome for the epic people who already support the channel on Patreon. They're all absolute heroes and I love them all deeply and of course often. If you want to join them on the board of awesome, the link to the Patreon page is in the description and my pinned comment. And with that all said and shouted, I am Get Good Guy and I'll see you next time. Laters. You probably won't do well, that's perfectly okay sometimes. Like as you're watching, I try to do bayonets and melees. Uh, what other ideas can I come up with off the top of my head? Let's go for explosive only. Uh, every time you die, have a shot of vodka. Uh, uh, don't do that if you're underage, please. That'd be a terrible idea.